Hello and welcome to another Making Data Useful with Adam. So today's uh, video is all about how to use pandas to group up some numbers. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about binning. So if you've never heard of the term binning, uh, basically it's the idea that you have some sort of continuous numbers, continuous numbers, and you are trying to make them more categorical. So this question actually comes from the comments, um, comes from Matt here. Um, first of all, Matt says it's this current video that's out, well, now it's the one prior. My last video, very useful. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. Um, he's got a Matt's got a employees column um, and says here, if a company if company A has five employees, uh, their group would be one to ten. Uh, if company B has eighteen employees, their group would be ten to twenty. Um, you know, I'd be interested to see how we can walk through that and do it in in sort of Python and, and pandas. So, cool. Well, let's just um, yeah get straight into it and we'll just double check our terminology. One to twenty, one to ten. And it's probably going to be 11 to 20 or 1 to 9, 10 to 19. So we've got to figure out if we want to include the right and we want to include the lowest and we'll, we'll work through that. So um, let's get back to our data we've been working with, which is this one here. So where we left off was we imported pandas. Um, we went ahead and we read in a CSV, which is this guy here. Um, we made sure the delimiter encoding and we just set everything to string to make it nice and easy. And we've got our business names and we did a value counts on that. And we can see here that the vast majority are registered um, and there's some deregistered. So if you haven't watched a previous video and you can't be bothered going back, this is what the data looks like. Um, you have your registered name. Um, no, you don't. Yeah, you have yeah your register name, which is I think it just says all business business name in every single one. Um, then the BN name, which I assume means business name, business name name, business name registration. That's confusing. Anyway, we're not here to discuss that. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this particular data set doesn't actually have an employees um, column. So what we're going to do is we actually are going to mock up some data. So we are going to include some employees. Uh, and to do so, we're just going to create a new column. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll just call this one employees. Um, there's a couple of different ways I can do this. Um, one of the easiest ways to add some employees is actually to use another Python package called NumPy. Um, oops, lowercase Adam, import NumPy as NP. Now, if you've done any reading or watched any sort of tutorials on pandas, and make sure you spell NumPy correctly, or NumPy, um, you always typically see these two together, especially with pandas, you always typically see NumPy imported at the same time, purely because they work interchangeably and they work together really well. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff that NumPy can do that you know, pandas can leverage uh, and vice versa. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the NumPy and we're going to use the random and the random integer sort of function. Uh, so what that looks like is something like this. So we've got uh, np.random.randint, okay? Now this is going to accept uh, three arguments, um, the lowest, the highest, and the number of values. And the number of values in this case is going to be the length of our data frame, okay? Um, so this particular data frame has 2.84 uh, million. We need to pass that number in. So the easiest way I can think of to do that is to maybe just go length and then just pass in the length. So we'll copy that out now. So um, number of employees, uh, let's just imagine this particular data set there's only really maximum, we'll just pretend here, 150 employees um, and the lowest number of employees, let's say it starts at one. So everyone has at least one employee, just to make it nice and easy. So one to 150 and then the length of our business data frame. Let's hit shift enter on that. And it wouldn't be my video if I didn't have an error. Uh, let's have a look. Let's include the equals and try that again. Oh, and make sure you run this. So shift enter on that. I typed it but never shift entered. It's like a new record. I reckon we're probably what, like less than a minute in, I've already hit some errors. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So I scroll to the right um, and here we go. We've now got our employees column um, or in Panda speak, our series. So one more time, we'll just quickly go through that mp.randomrandint. This little guy here actually creates a, an array, an umpire array, um, and then we're telling it to be the length of the data frame. So if I was to just to isolate that for a moment to make it really crystal, crystal clear, uh, if I was to say one to 10, and I was to make 10 of those, it would look like this. If I was to run that again, you'll see they keep changing. So if this number here is the length of our data frame, it just makes sure that we've got one value for every single row. That's all that was. Uh, and the one to 10 piece is what we've got here, but we've chosen to go between one and 150 employees. So that's how you would add an additional column. Um, and that's how you generate some random numbers in NumPy, but that's not the whole video. So let's keep going. All right. so. Now that we've got that, what I like to do, especially when I'm working with 2.8 million records, is actually just take a bit of a smaller sample, get all my code right, make sure it's working fine, and then run it 
across the entire data set. So a couple of different ways to do that. I could run dot head and it'll give me the first 10 records. Um, I could even run dot tail and it'll give me the last 10 records. Um, but I'm actually looking to run dot sample. That's going to give me a random sample um, of all of the records. So it's a random sample. If I run that again, I'm going to get a different random sample each time. Underground experts. That's random. Cool. Um, so I've just ran it across 10. Uh, it's a good start. And then we can um, grow that up to 200 and then 2000 and 2 million and we'll run it across everything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create another data frame based off the old one I'm gonna call it business name underscore sample underscore DF shift enter on that and now when I look at this it will have slightly different names again because it was a sample so random um, what we've got to the right here we've got a good little mix of um, different employee counts uh, so 66 512 so pretty good range so far um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and we're going to do it two different ways we're going to do it the more Python way um, and then we're going to do it the pandas way so the more Python way now first of all there's a really neat thing you can do um, in pandas uh, you can take a series or you know in Excel speak a column uh, you can say for instance take employees alrighty and so that's just the column employees now let's keep that in mind and pop it down here one cool thing we can do in pandas is we've got employees um, we can actually apply a function to employees. Now, if you're not familiar with functions, treat it as repeatable code. So something that's kind of wrapped up in a function, you can call the function. And if it's not making a great deal of sense, um, drop a comment, happy to do a whole you know, set of series on functions. But let's just imagine for a moment, this one's going to be called employees plus one, just as an example, okay? Employees plus one is going to take in a value and that value is going to be X. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return X plus one. Okay, shift enter on that, nothing really happens. If I was to run this sort of on its own and pass in say 10, it returns 11. Okay, if I pass in 12, it returns 13. So what I'm getting at is what we can actually do is we can apply this function to every single row in a series, okay? To do that, you guessed it, dot apply. Now I don't actually have to put the open and closed brackets around this one. If I hit shift enter on that, did you see that? Went from 66 to 67, went to five to six. I can do that one more time. So let's compare the two. So run that one on its own, 66, five, 112. Run it over here, 113, so on and so forth. So you, you've probably guessed where I'm going with this. Um, I'm gonna go and write a simple function um, that does a, an if statement and says, hey, if the you know number of employees is say for example less than 10 then it's 1 to 10 employees if it's less than or equal to 20 then it's you know 20 or less employees so let's go ahead and quickly write that out um, and to make this I'll do the first line and then I might even um, speed the I was gonna say tape what is it like 1990 speed this video up so we'll just say if X is less than or equal to 10 okay then we're just going to return say 1 to 10 employees okay and remember this is the python way of doing it there is a pandas way of doing it and we'll go through both um, and you can weigh up the pros and cons of each um, so if it's less than or equal to 10 then it's 1 to 10 uh, less than 20 less than 50 so we'll say you know 21 to 50 and then less than 100, we'll say 51 to 100. Shift enter, shift enter, shift enter. And now we've got a working example. So let's quickly validate that. 66 is 51 to 100, correct. Five is one to 10. So it's looking really good to me. What I can then do is I can then add an additional column and we can call it employee, employees, employee count, oops, employee count. Come on, Adam, you can do this. There we go. Oh, no, no, I can't. Okay, group. Shift enter on that. And then what we look like is we now have this wonderful little group um, available to us here. Cool. So now that we've done it the Python way, let's have a look at how we might go about doing it the pandas way. Okay. Um, so same sort of deal. Let's give ourselves a bit of space. So we just clear this out. Um, and what we might even do is we might just have a look at our data frame 
Um, and I might even get rid of this current uh, employee account group. Uh, actually, will I? No, take that back. I'm gonna leave it in there. Um, I'm gonna leave it in there because I wanna compare uh, the pandas way to the Python way and we can use a comparison operator um, just to make sure we haven't made any errors. So that's a good way to test our logic. Um, okay, cool. So the pandas way. So the pandas way is gonna require two lists. Um, one is going to be our bins, so sort of our ranges, and the other, the other is going to be our labels. So let's start with our, our bins, okay? And our bins that we've sort of landed on are 1 to 10 to 20 to 50 to 100 and then more than 100, okay? So what they might look like is 0 and then we want to do sort of that's 1 to 10, so that'll be that one there. And then we've got 20, 50, 100, 20... Oops, not million, 20, 50, 100. And then our final number is, it might be dynamic depending on our data, right? So what I might be able to say is, what is the maximum of our um, employee counts? And 148 is the maximum. Now I could just go and put that in there, but if that number changes, then that's not very useful. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and take that max. And what I might even say is, you know, max employee, Count. So creating a nice little variable there, shift enter on that. And all that means is that variable is now available to us. Shift enter one more time. So 148 is there. We'll pop that in as the final number. Shift enter on that. What we have now is some bins. All that looks like is this. And that's what pandas is going to require to use the pandas approach to creating these groups or bins. Um, what it's also going to require is uh, these bits here. Now I'm going to fast forward this because you've just seen me type it out once and I promised I'd fast forward it, but I didn't. Um, so I'm going to fast forward it this time. Okay. So what we've just done there is we've created some bins and we've created some labels, which look like this one to 10 employees, 11 to 20, 21 to 50, 51 to hundred greater than 100 employees. So you're probably wondering, that's awesome, Adam. You've just created two lists, but how do we actually get pandas to apply these as the groups? So to do that, all we do is we say PD for pandas and we, oops, try again, PD. And we know that because up here, we've got our pandas as PD. Um, and at the pandas level, there is this nice little functional method called cut. Uh, shift tab on that, and it's gonna tell us what it's asking for. It's asking for, hey, what is your series? Uh, tell me about your bins. Uh, and tell me about your labels. And we'll, we'll touch on the right and the, which is the element, include lowest in a bit. But for now, we'll just focus on the bins and the labels. So all we've got to do there is pass in our bins, which is this guy here. And our labels is equal to our labels. So we say, well, labels you're asking for, and I'm going to pass in your labels. And missing one argument from cut the bins. Oh, of course, I've just put the word bins in there. God, I'm just a bit silly at times, I tell you. Um, try that again. Okay, so bins is equal to my bins, not labels, Adam. And I actually do need to pass in uh, my series, which is this one here. So the very first thing it needs is X, which is this series here. So we'll copy that and we will paste it in. Shift enter on that and straight away, it's gone ahead and binned up our data. Um, and we can quickly test this um, and that was, I should pause for a moment. That was really quick, right? That was, <laughs> I was like, boom, done. Um, literally just some bins, some labels, and you use the cut method and away you go. You define your bins, you define your labels and happy days. They've all matched, which is really awesome. Um, and I think the cut method is a really good way to go about it. Now, before you jump in and just start using the cut um, functionality in pandas, I do recommend that you do check out the pandas.cut documentation. So there's a couple of, I guess, gotchas. Um, one of those is right. So that's all about indicating whether or not you want to include the rightmost edge. And the second one um, that I think can be a bit problematic is include lowest. So whether the first interval, so in our case, we had one to 10, whether that first interval on the left should be included or not. Now, if we if we had zero employees, we would actually be losing those out. We wouldn't be counting those. So um, at this point, it's kind of homework for you. Go have a play, um, see how you go. But before we wrap up for this video, why don't we do some really, really quick um, data visualization in Pandas uh, and get a feel for why we're we actually binning in the first place. So to do that, what we might do is we might take 10 steps back and start with employees. So when we think about employees, obviously we've got just 10 records. It's not too hard to work with, but just imagine that was much bigger. In fact, let's not imagine. 
Let's set that number to, we've sampled 10 here. Why don't we sample 1000? Okay, shift enter all the way down. I'm just gonna clean this up a bit while we're here. Don't mind me. Okay, so we're gonna run, we've got our um, employee, well, I've still called it employee plus one, haven't I? That's not very good. Let's clean that up. Oh my God. You know what? No, I'm gonna clean it up. See, <laughs> couldn't decide. Employee, um, what are we doing here? Employee, we'll call it employee counts. Now, if I shift enter on that, you do have to make sure that you are updating your apply functionality down here. Um, so I'm gonna shift enter all the way down and what I'm doing is, let's have a look. So we've got our, where are we? Uh, sample of 1000 and we're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna go all the way down and obviously it's much larger now. So what that looks like is if I was to say something like um, employees dot value underscore counts. So this is now telling us that, hey, 47, 82, 125, 27, 20, these all have 12, um, cool. Uh, but let's quickly visualize that to get a feel for what's actually happening there. So to do that, um, it is really as easy with pandas because it is, I think from memory using matplotlib in the background, I could do pl dot plot uh, and it's a really simple one. I can say, what kind of plot do I want? And we'll say it's a bar and rather than going left to right, we'll make that horizontal bar, so top down. Um, and that's going to generate for a thousand values, as you can see, not useful at all. There is literally a thousand, imagine if there was 2.8 million, that would just be an absolute nightmare. Um, so what we want to do is we don't want to use employees. We now want to use our new employee account groups. So shift enter on that. And just like that, it is so much easier to get a feel for, um, how many employees buy their group and that about so that's yeah that's kind of it that wraps it up so we've been able to take um what would normally be just a really inefficient way of looking at the number of employees to group them up into these bins um, we figured out two different ways to go about doing that um, we got to play around with a bit of numpy and random we got to use the sample um, functionality in pandas we got to build our own function and do an if statement um, we even got to uh, use the apply functionality in pandas to apply uh, that if statement inside that function to uh, the series or column. Um, and finally, we got to do some visualization. Now, this is really just scratching the surface. So if there's anything you want to deep dive into, please drop me a comment below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe. I think we are, fingers crossed, we are so close, but I want to get, I would love to get to 4,000 um, subscribers by the end of the month. Now we are, we are very close um, and that would be amazing. If you, look, if you look just a few videos ago, I was, you know, Fingers crossed, trying to get to a thousand, um, and we're about to get to four thousand, which is absolutely blowing my mind. I just I couldn't imagine uh, four thousand people would want to you know subscribe to this, and I'm yeah truly humbled. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and have a good night.